<laughs> We've got an exhaust trick, man. Oh, she corners. <laughs> it makes it quiet. Hooligan, normal. In the last video, we managed to take the scooter rear out for its first enjoyable shakedown test, and we discovered a few little issues that we need to rectify on this car today before it can finally go off to the body shop. We have got a brand new wheel bearing to install, and we've got a common problem at the back of this car to sort out. Okay, so there's one other thing that I think we have a uh, issue with on this car and that is the F1 pump. Now, normally it will hold its pressure uh, for the hydraulic actuator for quite some time before it has to kind of re-energize itself. But with this, let me see if I can show you. When I shift gears, um, it, it seems to kind of be uh, priming itself a lot more frequent than uh, I think it should. So let me see if we can do it. So I can normally force the F1 pump to kick in by simply putting some power to the car, I don't need to go fully on, let it all settle down and then by flicking through the gears, and there you go, that's the F1 noise, I can hear it, can you hear it? Tell me you can hear it. So we've got my dongle plugged in. You can see the little blue light down there from the OBD2 socket. And then what I want to do is go into Ferrari. Okay, we're going to go 4.30. While we're in here, let's just go into special functions on the clutch and uh, let's check how much clutch wear we've got here. Oh, that's brilliant. We've only got 12%, just over 12%. So it's uh, it's a pretty new clutch. I need to have a look through the history on this one, but that is fantastic news. Then I'm going to read data stream, hydraulic pressure circuit, press OK. Now this is what I want to measure. So the car is still on. So what I want to try and do is get the F1 pump to, you can see it's going down to 40. See if we can get it to. So we got it coming here, right? So there you go. So it's 50, 51, and now let's see how quickly this this drops. 49, 48, 47, 46, 43, 40. Now let's see what happens now. Let's put it into reverse. 30, now it primes again. So it goes down just below 40 and primes up again. So I'm not convinced by looking at these readings if the system is maintaining pressure exactly at how it should be. So I'm gonna run a second test and that is just to time it at the back of the car. Now the problem with these, and I've said it before on the Stradale, Ferrari use the cheapest bolts ever. I don't know how much these are each, they're probably like three quid each, but they always, always round off on the top. Ferrari, sort your build quality out. So I think our problem stems from this unit over here. So this is all of the F1 pump system, or the majority of it. The other bit sits on the side of the gearbox down there. Um, but what happens is there is a cylinder right up under here, and it's a uh, accumulator, a pressure vessel. So it, it contains the, and holds the pressure for the system, and it has a diaphragm in it. In fact, I've got one in the garage. Let me just show you in there. Okay, so as you hear me say quite often, here's one I have spare, which is, um, yeah, I've got more spares than Ferrari, I think, nowadays. Uh, so this is the power unit. Now, this came out of my Ferrari 360 when I was having a very similar F1 problem on that car. Uh, I'm going to put a link to that video series up there. If you've got a 430 or a 360 with an F1 system, I saved over £20,000 and we figured out how to fix it, where Ferrari would just throw very, very, very expensive parts at the system um, as a complete module. So we stripped it down and figured out how to fix it. For, I think it was like 
less than 50 quid to fi fix it in the end. Anyway, this is the power unit. Um, so this is our where our fluid sits. This is our fluid reservoir. We've got all the solenoids here. All the lines here would normally feed down to the actuator which sits on side uh, on the side of the gearbox, and that is the um, mechanical device that takes place of you manually changing those gears yourself. Um, and this is the bit that I think we have a problem with. This is called the accumulator. So in here there is a diaphragm, um, and basically over time it starts to perish, and gradually it will slowly deteriorate to the point where it's not holding pressure enough and it keeps cycling the power, which is what I thought I could hear with the car. So we're gonna run a few more tests, um, but as it happens, I also have a brand new spare one. So I thought we had a problem on the 360 um, at the time when we were working on that. So I bought a brand new one and it turned out I actually didn't have a problem. So this one I keep as a spare. We might be using it on the 360. The only problem with this is trying to take it off we might have to take the whole side engine panel off to get access to it because it's a 27 mil wrench you need to get to the bottom of it. And if you look here, to get to the access of that in the car is really difficult. But we have another plan. If that doesn't work, we're gonna just try and use a strap wrench here and see if it's got enough power to take and uh, just remove it and then hopefully tighten it back up. Anyway, we're gonna run some tests and see if we have the same problem on the 430. What I wanna do is get the accumulator to, uh, or get the system to fire up so it's pressurizing the accumulator. Now what will happen is if we start seeing it repressurize itself in a time frame of let's say less than two minutes, it really means we are kind of due to replace that accumulator. If it's way more than two minutes, then I think the system is still good. So let's run that little test. Okay, so here's the plan. We are going to power the car up. We're not gonna get it running. We're just gonna put it to position two there. We're gonna then time the intervals between the F1 pump kicking in. As soon as we hear that F1 pump kick in, we're gonna set the camera up and our stopwatch here. And we're just gonna time it until it naturally kicks in for a second time. Okay, reset, start again. So that was well over seven minutes, which is a great indication. And it really means that this is functioning absolutely perfectly normal. I'm gonna run it again for 11 seconds now. We're gonna see what that second interval is. We're gonna run it three times just to be safe. And um, well, it's looking like we haven't got a problem here, which is great news. But let's do this just to be sure. Oh, you're closer. There we go. So, seven minutes, uh, and that to me says, well, the system is totally fine. We're gonna run a third one just in case, but uh, for me, two results over seven minutes means this is cool, and we can put the panel back on. The rebuild on the Scuderia is going extremely well, but not all rebuilds have a happy ending. So grab a coffee, and let me tell you, a little story. The owner of this 458 Spider was a foolish man. He bought a crash damaged Ferrari and rebuilt it. Now, doing so is not always a bad thing, but with this story, there was one major difference. Had the buyer of the car simply run a car vertical, he would have straight away seen it had a very interesting history. Let's find out the story behind this one. Well, 15,000 miles meant it was a nice low mileage Ferrari, but then in financial and legal status, you can see the car was marked as scrap and that all happened in January 2016. But why was it marked as scrap? Well, in the damage report, you can see that the car was an insurance write-off and that write-off was a category B, unrepairable with some salvageable parts, which basically means that the car can never be rebuilt and put back on the road. The spec on it is standard Ferrari 458 Spider, but the interesting part is the timeline. So if we go from where the car was written off in January 2016, you can see afterwards it subsequently had a number plate change and then an ownership change. And then interestingly, nine months after it was written off, 
it has an inspection report, which means it went through an MOT and somebody had spent a lot of money rebuilding that category B car without running a car vertical, without finding out that a car can never be rebuilt and put back on the road. And subsequently, that Ferrari was crushed. So the moral of our story is, don't be foolish when you're buying a car, run a car vertical and be a star. And by using my link in the description below the video and using code RATAROSSA, you're gonna get a nice little discount. And who knows how much you could save by running a simple check. Okay, next we're gonna fix a couple of the common problems suffered on this car, but not just this car, pretty much every 430 suffers with this particular one. And uh, it's all to do with these, the tail lights here. As you can see on this side, they're nice and solid. But if you come over here, check this out. That's not good. It's not just 430s, actually the uh, Ferrari Enzo has the same tail lights and um, it's a common problem. Now, I could buy some brand new ones which are very expensive, but you can bet your bottom dollar that these will do exactly the same in a few years time. So we're gonna take these out, see how bad they are and see if there's any way of maybe doing kind of some kind of retro refit on it and fixing it ourselves. Just unscrewed it, just got to unclip it, and I can see straight away the problem on this one here. Okay. Ah, interesting, look at this. This one has been repaired before. Now, you'll notice right there, and if you look right there, the other part of it is still in the car. Just hold that for a second. I'll all right, so that bit there has broken off and that's why we had it, we had the movement. So they're just held in by three 10 mil bolts. Now these outside ones here, rather tricky to get to. There we go. Let's have a quick look. And there you go, that bottom one is stuck in there still. So let's get that one off. Okay, how much are they? Oh, we just had a quick look. They're 400 quid. 400 quid each? About yep. 400 quid each. So we did 800 quid there. And um, as I said, we could buy new ones and the chances are, look how bad that design is. It's just that tiny little bit of there. It's no wonder you put any pressure on that, it's gonna snap. So um, let's see if we can make it better. So this one's obviously had one or two repairs before. We so see we've got some epoxy glue here and then we've got some Rubbish glue, look, this, that's holding this one on here. And that, literally, will peel off, look. look that. Not very good at all. So we're gonna somehow try and reinforce this a little bit better. Um, and the tricky one is gonna be this lower one here. So we've got to glue that on there. But I've got an idea. Okay, here is the uh, idea I've come up with. Might work, might not, worth a try, as I always say. So, we've got four channels on here, and that's where it's broken. This is the tricky part, really, because there's no strength in, uh, in just putting a bit of glue here. Not too bad up here. We're gonna do something up here as well, but four channels. So what I've done is I've cut four strips of metal, different sizes, labeled it one, two, three, four. Done these, same one here, one, two, three, four. We're gonna glue them on here like this. So we should have four prongs sticking out the top here. Then, once that is uh, fully cured, I can glue that in there. And I think the problem is, is how to keep this dead straight when we put some glue on it. So uh, I think that's gonna help. And it's also gonna give it some structural rigidity when we finish it. And so, uh, in theory, it might be better than the factory fix. Then I've cut another strip, 
which is, was it this one? So we've got another strip here that is going to go in here. Then it's almost the shape, we've got to just finish it off. We're going to put it in here, we're going to glue it to both surfaces where it cracks. I was scuffed up all the surface here just to help it bond together and then um, well with a bit of luck that should be um, a good temporary fix yeah. My metal bit there. Can't make that so well look at that it's not even got any glue on it. All right, here we go. Let's push that up right into there. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. All right, I'm gonna mix up a bit more and just push it down the gaps when this just sets in place, yeah? Two, three, Right, Lexi's gonna be happy with me. Oh. <laughs> We're just gonna put some more glue once that's dried. Just reinforce that, reinforce that in the gaps as well, and see what happens. All right, we're looking good. This has uh, dried nicely, it's only been about five minutes and a little prong idea seems to look like it might work. So I've labelled up the side so I know exactly which orientation this goes in. Uh, that is two, that is two, so we're going to put it in like that. That should hold it in place. We'll push all these together and then put a load of glue and a load of tape around it as well I think and um, I reckon it might work. Drying time on this is about one cup of coffee. Cheers. 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 Looking pretty good. We've added some extra glue on the outside. We've just built it right up. Same here. And this goes in. Like so. There we go. Eight hundred pound saving. I think it's probably a thousand with that. Just, just like yeah. that. Easy. Here we go. What's this? Ready? Solid as a rock. Genius. Next up, we have a brand new wheel bearing to install. Not cheap, and typically with Ferrari, you have to replace the whole module, not just the bearings themselves. I've shopped around and I'll let you know how much I paid a little later on. Replacement though is pretty straightforward. Wheel off, then it's use a punch to unstrafe the wheel nut, a 36 mil socket to then remove it. Next is the brake caliper followed by the disc. I then find removing both the 10 mil hex nuts holding the top of the suspension to the hub and also the track rod end gives you plenty of access. Then there's a metal plate at the back of the hub that has to come off with four 10 mils to gain access to the hub bolts themselves. Four of those need to come off next and it's out with the hub and the only last thing you need to do is unroot the cable. All right, so here's our old one out of the car. To be honest, that wasn't too bad. And well, it's hard to tell, but certainly sounded like we had a major problem with that one. And I really do hope this is gonna fix it. Here's our new one out of the box, brand new. Certainly feels nice and tight, that one. Real good. All right, so let's uh, just reverse process that. I'm not gonna show it all on camera. We're just gonna fit this and uh, just talk up all those bolts to factory spec. We've also got a new nut to put on here, brand new one there, and uh, there we go, it's got a little spinny back collar on that one, I think that is the same, I know Ferrari did change this design, but that does look like the new one, 
I think it's just seized up a little bit so it's not spinning but certainly looks the same. In the last video we discovered a lovely little button on the key fob which transformed the sound of this engine and uh, put it on a whole new level and a big smile on my face. She sounds amazing! And I said, I'm pretty sure it's got an exhaust valve controller on it holding the flaps open on the exhaust. And um, well, I think I was right. First of all, this is the little valve down here that sits on the uh, exhaust pipe. And somewhere on there will be an airline. And it looks like it is controlled by this because this is not standard. And that says on it, Capristo. So we have a Capristo exhaust controller. And um, if anyone has got a 430 scooter here, or a 430 for that matter, I can highly recommend it because that was an amazing discovery and put a massive smile on this face. All right, so let's do a cost update. We didn't do one in the last video because I didn't really spend anything. But this time around we have, we had to put that new um, hub on the car, which was 457 pounds. Uh, what else? We haven't done anything on the F1. We didn't need to do anything there. We did repair those rear lights. So that goes on our savings column. Rear lights with that, 1,090 pounds. I also had a little jiggle around here because in the last video I forgot to put in there the rear diffuser. That was 4,169 pounds just for the standard one, uh, which was covered in mud and we had that little bit missing. So uh, we repaired that. My idea of upgrading that to a carbon one I might rethink that because the carbon ones uh, are well over 10,000 pounds. So uh, we'll see about that one. And um, I think that was it. There's definitely some other stuff here that what we'll do eventually is go through the original tour around the car. So there's things like the doors, we're gonna repair the doors. There is things like the rear wheel, we got away without having to do anything on the rear wheel. So we'll go around that. There was stuff that we saw and there was lots of stuff that we didn't see that is not actually on here either, which was the uh, steering rack. Now we did spend on the steering rack, but we also saved massively by buying a used one. So our costs update. So we have spent so far, oh, what is our, Maths on this one this um, week. £58,287. £58,287. Now, we really can't have that much more to do on here. It's driving nice now. What else have we got? Oh. We've got uh, front lights. Front lights. Bit of paint. Bit paint of body and work. body work. And then... Maybe, maybe some upgrades if you want to do upgrades. some upgrades. We might mate. be doing some upgrades on this one. Okay, so that's... Really, if we can keep those costs down, the paint and bodywork is gonna be quite a high one, but we're looking good, we're looking good here. And then our savings, what does this come to over here? 37,431 pounds. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, so, uh, and like I say, there was a lot more with the uh, steering rack and stuff like that. So, it's looking pretty healthy. Can we come in under 65? That is the new total, can we do it? Um, let's wait and see. And on that, it just leaves me to do this. Have a little drive out, enjoy the car, and, well, what do you guys think? Can I rebuild this final number on this one? Will it be sub 65,000 pounds? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Don't forget, like, and share, subscribe. And to everybody who has donated in one way or another, whether it's buying the new merch or like Big Taco Steve, who donates with a super thanks on every single video that I do. I've got to say a massive thanks to you guys for making that dream F40 come alive together. We are going to build something very, very epic. Anyway, guys, I will see you all very shortly in the next one. Stay safe and ciao for now. So tomorrow is the story. <laughs>